guys, a quick side note before we start today's episode. We're going to cover a duo, but since we're going to go by chronology, we'll start with the life of Kevin Eastman before he met his future partner, Peter Leard. We all have that favorite childhood toy that gives us a sense of nostalgia, but there are some brands that even if you never became a huge follower, you know them very well. So today, we're going to explore the life of Kevin Eastman and Peter Leard, the men behind the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and how they change how we play. Kevin Brooks Eastman was born on May 30th, 1962 in Portland, Maine, to Kim and Sandra Eastman. While not a great deal is known about his formative years, we do know he grew up in a small town of Groveville, Maine, with sisters Marlene, Judy, and Marianne. From all accounts, Kevin was an artistic child, and doodled constantly. And like most people, he was a huge comic book fan, and basically became a self-taught artist. And though he had many influences, his idol was Jacob Kurtzberg, better known to the world as famed Marvel artist Jack Kirby. After graduating Westbrook High School, Kevin struggled, but his work did appear in Clay Geard's Comic Wave and many comic goodies in 1980 to 1982. It was around this time, while working in a restaurant, he started seeing a co-worker that was attending the University of Massachusetts, Amherst. Ultimately, Kevin followed her to Northampton, Massachusetts. And one day, while trying to get a local newspaper to publish his work, he met one Peter Leard. And the two men not only struck up a friendship, they collaborated on a few projects. Now let me give you a synopsis about Peter Allen Leard before we go any further. He was born on January 27, 1954 in North Adams, Massachusetts. And from what's known, he has only one sibling, a brother named Don. Toward the end of 1982, Peter was making $10 per illustration from a local newspaper in Dover, New Hampshire. Needless to say, the friendship between Peter and Kevin was a godsend, and eventually, they established the beginnings of Mirage Studios in 1983, and not long after, the two created the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, this is where things get interesting, because one day while brainstorming and making fun of bad TV shows, Eastman sketched out a funny drawing, and that eventually became the basis for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which they both admit was a parody of the four biggest comics at the time. Marvel's New Mutants and Daredevil, Dave Sims' Cerebus, and Frank Miller's Ronin. After naming the four anthropomorphic turtles, they decided to self-publish a single copy, which actually makes a lot of sense since it was a tongue-in-cheek project to begin with because I can't even imagine how that would have played out with a traditional publisher. So you have a comic for me? That we do, sir. Fantastic. I'm all ears. Well, picture this. We're in New York, following four teenage turtles and their adoptive father, who's a rat. And not only is he their parent, but he's also their sensei, teaching them Japanese ninjutsu in the sewers they call home. And eventually, they use these skills to protect the city from criminals, other mutated creatures, and alien invaders, all while befriending a human reporter named April O'Neil, and remaining hidden from the world. Well, what do you think? Fun fact, Kevin and Peter were going to use Japanese names at first. However, they realized that it wasn't silly enough for what they were going for. So, as history buffs, they decided to name the turtles after the fathers of the Renaissance. Anyway, back to our story. In May of 1984, the first issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was published, and the 40-page oversized comic had an initial run of 3,275 copies, and the printing cost to them was $1,200, with 500 of it coming from their combined tax returns, and the remaining 700 being a loan from Kevin's uncle. So, the cost to launch the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would be exactly $3,037.70 today. Now, as most fanatics know, the comic was published by Mirage Studios. However, this wasn't a real company, because it was basically the duo's name for their little kitchen office. 
But despite these humble beginnings, by September of 1985, the first issue received three additional printings. Now that they had a small following, licensing agent Mark Friedman approached Kevin and Peter about expanding into toys. So in 1986, the first set of lead figurines was released by Dark Horse Miniatures. By January of 1987, the duo flew out to California to meet with Playmates Toys, and they've talked about expanding into the action figure market, to which the concepts and ideas were handled by a marketing crew headed by Carl Aronian, the VP of Sales, Richard Salas, and VP of Playmates, Bill Carson. The satire started by Kevin and Peter continued as they all worked and collaborated with Murakami, Wolf, and Swenson Animation. As for Playmates, their team became associate producers and helped write the first miniseries, which was launched to help sell the turtle action figures. Catch phrases like, heroes in a half shell, and battle cries like, turtle power, all came from this creative team. And as the series developed, Jack Mendelson, best known for shows like Three's Company and The Carol Burnett Show, became the scriptwriter and editor. Despite these great talents coming together, the miniseries had to air three times before it finally gained an audience. But once the action figures started flying off the shelves, the turtles finally got picked up by Group W, a company that funded the next round of animations. Afterward, the show went to CBS, and with their industry connections, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles brand finally gained mainstream success. At the height of the fandom's frenzy, which was roughly about 1980s to early 1990s, the turtles could be found on all types of merchandise. And by that we're talking underwear, snack pies, skateboards, cereal, video games, towels, school supplies, and toy shaving kits for some odd reason. The Turtles animated TV series lasted 10 seasons, ending in 1996. But since that series had concluded, a live action series was created in 1997 in conjunction with Saban Entertainment. Ninja Turtles, the next mutation, not only introduced a fifth turtle, but a female one named Venus de Milo. However, the series was so unsuccessful, it was quickly canceled after only one season. Are you serious? But it wasn't all bad news, because during this period, a live action movie was released in 1990, grossing in 135 million. $265,915 worldwide, and that's against a $13,500,000 budget. A massive success, even by Hollywood standards. Afterward, a grittier version of the comics continued. But since the independent film was so successful, it spawned two sequels and a third animated film, which was released in 2007. And let's not forget the creepy concert tour coming out of our shells, which was also wildly popular for... I have no explanation. Still, despite the brand generating six billion in revenue to date, all good things must come to an end. So between outside pursuits and creative differences, the friendship between Kevin and Peter began to fizzle. In fact, in an interview, Peter confirmed that the pair had not even spent time together since 1993. So it wasn't surprising that on June 1st, 2000, Peter and Mirage Group purchased Kevin's share of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles property, with the actual buyout finalizing on March 1st, 2008. And like his former partner, Peter eventually sold the entire franchise to Viacom Nickelodeon in 2009 for approximately $60 million, a sale that occurred close to the Turtles' 25th anniversary, which was a bittersweet moment for both the creator and longtime fans. But in December of 2019, issue 100 of the IDW Publishing's TMNT comic, it teased a project titled The Last Ronin, in which they claimed a possible reunion between Kevin and Peter. 
And thankfully, not only was the project confirmed, it was released on October 28, 2020. These days, Kevin owns Tundra Publishing, which deals strictly with comics. The company is behind several notable series and graphic novels such as From Hell, Taboo, Madman Adventures, Doghead, and Tantalizing Stories. He is also the owner and editor of the sci-fi and fantasy magazine Heavy Metal. Like his former partner, Peter also is very active in the industry. However, he has also delved into philanthropy, establishing the Zarek Foundation, through which he helps self-publishers and supports other charitable foundations. As for the turtles themselves, they are as popular as ever, with merchandising available at their official store, superhero stuff, Target, and Amazon. And with the brand seeing a massive resurgence, it's no surprise that new shows and films are in the works. Additionally, a live-action reboot is due for release the summer of 2021. So it appears that Donatello, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Leonardo will prowl the sewers of New York for years to come. Well, Poppers, our excursion into the world of pizza-loving turtles has been awesome. The next episode, we're going to visit with Xavier Roberts, the man behind the infamous Cabbage Patch Kid phenomena. See you later!